Okay. Welcome to the Lean Champion Spotlight with Justin Uyar. Uh Today's guest, the first inaugural guest, is George Hunt. George, tell us about yourself. Hey, thanks for having me on, Justin. Um, so, as you said, my name is George Hunt. Um, I work currently for IPS, which is Integrated Project Services. Um, I'm the Lean Director here. Um, you know, what can I say about myself? Um, I think, you know, I consider myself a lifelong learner. I, I've always liked learning things. Most of it ends up being random stuff that I never actually get to use, but it's still up there in my head. Um, you know, I feel like I do decent at Jeopardy when I end up watching it. <laughs> but like I said, nothing, nothing too much that I end up being finding useful. But yeah, I, th I think that's generally how I kind of am. I like to absorb a lot of information. I like to learn um you know consistently and constantly and you know my role now is I, I try and help others see ways to do that as well and if i can drop a little piece of knowledge here and there that people listen to then great all the better tell me tell me about some of your other roles i know you've uh had a few different roles inside and outside of construction right so tell me tell me about some of those and, and kind of the things that you've learned uh through those roles yeah. Um, so most of my experience has been in construction, just a number of different roles. I mean, you know, I started out in VDC, you know, virtual design and construction, um, you know, spent some time in the field as an assistant super, some PM time, um, ran a planning and scheduling department for a little while, um, you know, to you now the, you know, an, an internal lean champion. But then, you know, I did take a little bit of a detour and I worked for a software company for a while. Um, for about a year and a half so that was a bit of a detour for me and i think you know part of the reason i did that was from the mindset of trying to learn something different um you know obviously you look at it on the surface and it's like well what am i going to get from you know a software company uh you know coming from the construction side of things but you know i think what, what i looked at it as you know not only as an opportunity to you know help the company where they you know, had some shortcomings and they wanted to have my help come in. But then, you know, a lot of the software industry in the business was, is around, you know, selling, obviously. And I think from our standpoint within design and construction, whether we are front facing all the time or not, a lot of it is being able to kind of sell and present yourself better and, you know, hey, you know, this is some of the great stuff that we're doing and, and kind of promote yourself a little bit. And I think that's probably a spot where I definitely needed a lot of help with, um, you know, just because I think unless you are that front facing person, a lot of times within design and construction, you don't necessarily get the opportunity to do that a lot. And so, um, you know, in that role, I got to do that a lot um, and like a lot, a lot, you know, between webinars and a podcast and, you know, just talking to customers and clients across the board. You know, I, I got to practice it over and over and over again, being able to present and speak in public and talk with folks. And, you know, it helped me come out of my shell quite a bit. Um, whether or not people realize it when I end up talking to them, I am kind of a shy person and a little bit in internal to myself most of the time. But yeah, I, I think that's what I ended up learning most from that. And, and just kind of, you know, that people, human side and interaction, I got a lot of that from from that piece of it. And then... You know, now I'm I'm back into the construction world um, in, a, in a different role than I was when I left. But you know, trying to help folks, you know, understand what lean is, um, you know, from a cultural standpoint as well as you know that tactical level. But just trying to, you know, spread the word, spread the idea, help people kind of get better at what they're doing, help them improve. Um, you know, I always like to take the approach that I don't like to tell you what you're doing wrong and, and here's something to fix it. It's, you know, I, I, I try to lead people there without me trying to tell them, right? And that's the whole, um, you know, the whole kind of art, if you will, of the whole thing is trying to, you know, help people help themselves, you know, at the same time of trying to guide them a little bit and gives them some tips. So, yeah, there's there's quite a bit that I think I've learned along the way. And, you know, it's kind of the reason why I've, you know, over the years just taken different roles, even though they're, you know, not necessarily one link to the other, but, you know, the, it just kind of the natural progression of wanting to learn 
and do something different because I figured it was going to help me at some point. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's that's super cool. So uh, I want to hone in on something now. Let me ask you this. What what does lean mean to you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I feel like this has evolved and kind of changed and everything over the years. Um, and it probably still evolves and bounces around my head, depending on how good of a day I'm having. Um, <laughs> but to me, it's all really about having the mindset of respecting one another and each other as human beings and trying to continuously improve what we're doing and you know ourselves at the same time so it's a very generic broad you know kind of a, a definition and mm. uh, of way to look at it but i also think that you know lean in and of itself is such a big kind of idea that we're trying to talk about that you have to start at that kind of high level at some point and that you know that's that's kind of the goal that you know we want to have that as a mindset and you know be able to apply it across any industry which is what i think you know everyone tries to do is obviously start in the manufacturing but taking those principles from there and being able to apply it to all these other industries now that you know um are using lean and lean practices within them it, it's that high level that you get to start with so generally speaking that's kind of what it means to me or it's kind of evolved to at least um you know without getting trying to go too much into the specifics on it but no that's awesome that's awesome man i love that you hit something that that's kind of close to my heart man with with respect for people what do you think and and you know we'll we'll speak candidly right the industry is a little bit broken in this aspect what do you think are some of the biggest challenges um, with respect to people? Like, why why is respect so hard to find on a job site or within an organization? Well, I think, I mean, if you look at it currently, I think it's so hard to find because it's just there's been so much, so many years of this hierarchy and this this view of not even just construction, but organizations in general that someone's in charge and the people below them are below them, right? And then it just kind of cascades and waterfalls down. And I think, you know, construction ends up being one of those industries where it goes down to folks who are literally using their hands and oftentimes they're literally in the dirt, in the mud, you know, and doing all those things. And I think because of that, you know, we have years and years of this mindset that, you know, we look down on them, right? Like you said, we're being candid is that's how it's always been looked at. And so it's difficult now when you're, we're trying to look at it and, you know, we've kind of come to our senses a bit and we're trying to say, Hey, let's reverse this. It's, it's difficult because there's a mindset shift and there's a, you know, a cultural shift that we have to make. And there's, you know, a lot of folks out there now who are trying to do that and trying to do better. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's going to be an uphill battle because we have, such an ingrained culture of you know that top-down mentality and that you know you're underneath me you go and do what i say i don't really care what's going on because then you know it uh whatever you end up doing as long as you do it right it's going to benefit me and, and i kind of move on from there and so i think that that's one of the biggest things is it's ingrained in the culture and in the industry that it's very difficult to try and break us from it yeah, it's a it's a bad habit, right? It's a bad habit that's been passed down from generation to generation to generation, and uh, it, it takes people like you, right, that are going out and and implementing a, a new way, a better way to kind of break that cycle. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I appreciate that of people like me. Um, I like to think so, you know, uh, from time to time. But yeah, it's it does it takes folks to be able to kind of say, hey, there's a different way of doing it. Uh, and kind of standing up and going and doing it and it doesn't necessarily need to be the the boldest you know most rash kind of a uh, action either right just kind of starting with asking folks what they're thinking and getting their opinion on things and actually valuing what they're saying um, I think can go a long way um, and I think some of the most successful you know examples of that I've seen have just been on that simple level of people just kind of going out of their way and you know 
talking to someone like they're a human and understanding what they're going through in their day and everything else. You know what I mean? And it's it's much less of a a business transaction and more like a hey, we're two people here working on a job, doing things. What's going on? And you start to talk to them on a you know more of a human level. Yeah, absolutely, man. You get to know their names, right? I mean, that's one of the biggest things is just going on a job site and knowing somebody's name is is huge, right? Because we're two we're two humans talking to each other uh, before anything. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's one of the things that um, I try to do is try to learn names. That happens to be one of the things that is not very easy for me to remember <laughs> names. So I, I try and do, you know use all those little tricks of associating. OK, that person's name is this. Let me associate it with that to try and remember. Um, so I'm trying to get better at that. But yes, absolutely. You know, just learning people's names is kind of step one, I think. So you you said uh, a couple of times now the word mindset, right? And, and I want to hone in on that. What's what's your opinion on lean tools versus a lean mindset? Yeah, I mean, I think my opinion on the difference between them is that you know you you need to have the mindset to actually properly use the lean tools. And I'll say that and kind of emphasize the properly piece of that. Because I think from a technical standpoint, you can, let's take Last Planner System, for example, you can learn how Last Planner System is supposed to run. You can do everything down to a T on a technical basis and kind of go through the motions of, you know, having the milestone planning and having the conversations all the way down to the daily level of detail. But if your mindset never shifts to one where you're actually getting input from the Last Planners and valuing it and, and incorporating it into the plan, and you know looking at it and prioritizing the flow of the work on it you don't end up with the benefits that you should be getting out of it um and then also the other thing with it is i've seen when people don't embrace the mindset behind the tool they can also weaponize it which i think is, is part of what ends up happening nowadays is a lot of folks are looking at it you know and less planner for example or a lot of the you know, lean tools we're using in design and construction. Most of them have been out there for some time and they've started to go. And so you start to hear folks out there like, oh yeah, I've heard that and used it before. And then they kind of roll their eyes. And if you go into, you know, why are they rolling their eyes at it? And it's like, well, they've had a bad, ex you know, a bad example or a bad experience with it. And more often than not, it's probably because the person's taking it and weaponizing it, you know, like we do with so many other tools that we've used throughout the history of design and construction, right? It's everything ends up being contracts and, you know, subcontracts and litigation and all these things that are really to cover our own behinds. Um, and they use these tools in that same way. And so you can use the tool and with two different mindsets, you get two separate reactions and different results from them, but it's the same tool that you're using, you know? And so I think that's really kind of where that, that mindset has to follow the tool. And so if you're not using the proper mindset behind it, you know, it, it ends up either giving you suboptimal results, you know, that, you know, you hear about, or, you know, you end up having people get a sour taste in their mouth because they have such a bad reaction to it um, and experience. George, that's, that, that is that is beautiful. And I think that's something that I, I've personally experienced. I'd be willing to bet that many have experienced is, going through the tool and saying, hey, I, I did it right. I did all the steps. It looks great. Why am I not getting the results that that I want, right? And, and I think you hit the nail on the head. That mindset is, is the foundation for it. So yeah. let, let, me, let me ask you this. In, in your role as corporate lean director, how, how do you develop a mindset within your organization? It's a lovely question. <laughs> um, and I mean, I'm learning more and more every day on how to, we'll say how to best do it, right? There's the ways that I think I came into this thinking, okay, I'm going to approach it this way. Um, and it's since shifted a little bit depending on the, you know, the people I'm talking to and, you know, the different pieces of the organization I'm talking to as well. But I think what I've noticed, um, and it even predates me in my current role is, you know, in my last company when I was, you know, kind of a bit of the internal lean champion and trying to promote the use of some of these tools and help out is that if you're genuine behind your intention on 
why you're talking about using this tool or why you're talking about lean. People respond to that. You know, it is usually, you know, some do it better than others, but, you know, usually you can tell when someone's just kind of talking, right? And they're kind of talking through their teeth or they're doing things out of both sides of their mouths. And I think, you know, what I've learned is that if you actually go and when you're talking with folks, express that you're actually genuine about what you're saying and you mean what you're saying about it. You know, so when I'm saying, hey, you know, we do want to bring in all these last planners and talk with them and hear what they have to say, right? Let's hear what they have to say. Let's listen to them and then let's, you know, react and do something about it so that their opinion matters. Um, and in talking with people, when if they can get that from you, that you're being genuine behind what you're talking about, they'll start listening to you a little more. Um, and so I think that's kind of, you know, one of the step ones is when you're starting to talk with folks. But, you know, I think from, you know, an overall perspective with it too, is you really have to connect on a business level to, you know, the core values and, you know, what the business is trying to drive to, right? Because I think, you know, at the end of the day, we are talking about businesses here. And so being able to take, you know, these these ideas and mindsets and connecting it to that business side of it. So the values that the company stands for, right? Those mission statements and saying that, hey, you know, thinking with a lean mindset and continuous improvement and all this, this supports what this company wants to be doing and what we're supposed to be, you know, um, standing for out there. And I think that helps, you know, on, on a on a larger company level and kind of gives a little bit of some credence to what you're talking about. And, you know, if people see it as like, a, okay, this isn't just something we're trying to shoehorn in here, you know, um, we, we yeah, actually... Yeah. You're describing the value to them uh, uh, is what I'm hearing, right? You're describing the this isn't just something we're going to do to check a box, but here's the value to it. Yeah, no, exactly, right? You got to you got to give them the value behind it and give them the why they should be, you know, listening and looking at this differently. Um, and I think the, you know, one of the difficult things is that, you know, we are all individuals, so everyone's going to have a little bit of a different why, you know, and so. Um, we've probably all worked with people in the past or, you know, now, or we might've all been in a position where, you know, you're kind of showing up to work every day and you're kind of just going through to get a paycheck. So at the end of the day, if I connect to the business values, you might not even care. Do you know what I mean? And so like, that's the thing is that I, right. It is we, we, we all probably have an example of someone who shows up like that every day. Or like I said, right. It, I can tell you that, you know, some of my early jobs I showed up to and it's just like, you know, I'm already looking my way out the door, what's going on, like I'm just kind of going through the motions. And so, you know, it, it, I mean, listen, I think it's a pretty real human kind of a reaction. But for those folks, making the connection to, you know, the business values is, isn't going to mean anything to them. So if you want to reach those people, it's, you know, the unfortunate part is you have to talk to them personally. And it's like when you get to a point where there's so many people that you got to talk to personally, it's kind of, it gets a little overwhelming, but, you know, I think that's one of the most effective ways to do it is you got to you got to find the why for every person. Who 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 does that? Is it is it you? Is it the project team? Who's who's finding the why? It's a great question and I think it all kind of depends on the situation. I mean, I think some of the most successful teams do it as a team. Um, you know, I I can point to in my head a few projects that we have that are going very successfully that the client and us are making it a very big point to kind of create the why from the outset uh, for the whole project so that when new members are being brought on they're being onboarded and being told you know this is what you know the why behind this project this is what we're doing the project for um you know we, we work you know, that, that kind of thing. Team, that collective team is is design as well. So that's client and design and contractor. Um, in the cases that I'm thinking of in my head, it is. Um, but yeah, that's you know, awesome. it, yeah, it is. It, it's that's, you know, that's one of my favorite things, I think, with being here currently at IPS is that, you know, from my standpoint of wanting to to spread lean and, and you know, get it, get everyone you know, thinking this way and seeing how it can benefit them. 
that I, I have this opportunity where we have design in-house and we have construction and we even have commissioning and validation. And so we have this whole spread for, you know, really almost the entire life cycle of a project that we can influence. And so on the opportunities that we do get to work end to end, it, it, it for me, it gets me so excited because it's like, wow, okay, right. This is, this is almost a, a perfect scenario to set ourselves up from day one to say, okay, we're going to set our things up, right? You know, we, we don't have to necessarily worry the situation that we, you know, that I'm used to. And I think a lot of people are used to where the design team sends out in one way and then the contractor gets pulled on and then it's like, okay, well, they aren't, you know, they might get aligned, right? But there's that time of having to get aligned. And it's like, um, you know, we have this opportunity where we can do it from day one and we're all one company under one roof. And so, um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of one of the nicer things here. And I think, you know, one of the things we were just talking about is the big thing on that, too, is a client push for it and an understanding that, you know, we want to be doing something differently because it benefits the whole project as well as the end product at the end. Um, so I think that's a big key factor on it. Oh, yeah, man. That's awesome. That's awesome, George. Uh, let, me, let me ask you this. On that uh, specific success story, are there any certain tools that that – provided more value or, or helped facilitate that more than others? Is there one or two things that you can point to to say, hey, these were real game changers in, in the way we were able to create this alignment? Yeah, I mean, I think early on there was specific emphasis around kind of the the team building and kind of sitting down and, and writing up project conditions of satisfaction. Um, I think now specifically, you know, a lot of like most of our jobs will go through it and, and create a condition satisfaction um, where in my past life, we didn't necessarily go through with that. I think that's one of the single most like beneficial things the team can do, even if you're not going to end up running last planner system or anything. Right. If that's the only thing you do is sit down as a team at the beginning and come up with a project conditions of satisfaction so that everyone yeah. on the team understands, like as a team, this is what we need to meet to be able to find this project satisfactory, right? So we're all pushing towards the same goal here. Um, so I would say that's definitely one of the big things that I saw that, you know, I think contributed to the overall success on it. What is What does that look like? If, if you were to explain conditions of satisfaction to a 10 year old, right? What, what does that look like? What, what can I point to or touch for for a condition of satisfaction? So, I mean, I think they're multifaceted. So if you were to say, okay, what are conditions of satisfaction in general for this project? Um, it's going to be, you know, a mixture of, you know, either goals we have on the project, uh, ways of behaving with each other, right? Ways of kind of, um, you know, certain values and things we want to hold towards ourselves, right? How we act and that kind of thing. So it's kind of a mixture of, you know, tangible goals, but also the ways we want to act and, you know, interact with one another on this project for us to be able to say, yeah, this was successful at the end, you know, because I think, you know, defining success other than, you know, the typical things we look at of, you know, schedule budget, right? And then the physical building at the end of it is really kind of key in that perspective is, is we're trying to define you know, what What are we going to be satisfied with? You know, what do we have to meet from that perspective at the end of it? Um, so I'm hoping that was kind of a easy enough <laughs> explanation behind it. But yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's awesome because you hear you hear the old adage, right? We want to build it on time, under budget with with zero quality issues, right? No safety incidents. And yep. And you kind of alluded to that. that those are the the four mainstays of how you define success on a project. So, so you described in conditions of satisfaction is just open up a whole new world, right? On, hey, this is the way we expect people to behave and treat each other, and these are the things that are expected, right? And we're communicating them. So, I think a lot of times, in my experience, there's expectations, but they're not communicated. Yep. They're not agreed on, right? They're kind of just uh, unsaid things that, that maybe never get addressed. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think that that's one that I think pops up quite a bit 
uh, is some sort of a condition satisfaction around communication in general. <laughs> you know I mean, like it, I think one recently that I saw was that, you know, all decisions will be um, clearly communicated and I forget the wording behind it, but basically, you know, as decisions are made, we're going to make sure that if anyone's going to look at them, right, they understand why they were made. They're going to be communicated to the right people, that kind of thing. So no one's left in the dark and, you know, left with their proverbial pants down at some point <laughs> that, you know, they didn't realize, wait a second, we decided on that. It's like, yeah, we did. Um, but it, it's it's more of the, I think, the, the real telling conditions of satisfaction tend to be the less... I don't want to say the less tangible things, but the more soft skill, you know, focused, right? Um, you know, one that I loved that that one of the projects did was, you know, that as a condition of satisfaction, we're going to have a learning environment, right? And so what does that look like? And it, you know what I mean? It's it's a very lofty goal and it's kind of nebulous, like, okay, what does that mean? Um, sure. But to their credit, the team has tried to start doing that by, um, you know, trying to schedule regular lunch and learns, right, for not only just the people in the trailer, but also the craft. So if it's nice outside, they have a tent where they eat, you know, lunches. So they'll have a, a you know, a lunch and learn. They just had one, you know, not long ago about Earth Day. Um, you know what I mean? So brought up some stuff about Earth Day and, you know, sustainability, that kind of a thing, and letting anyone sit in on them. So there's that side of learning, but then also they've created a mural board that, you know, people put up, you know, what I learned today, essentially, you know, posting kind of lessons learned up there for people to go on and see um, and kind of giving out, you know, little awards and things like that as people, you know, put their their lesson learned up there, um, you know, doing a, kind of a random drawing of people who put things up there. So, you know, just little ways like that where you don't necessarily think about it like, oh, yeah, you know, that is kind of it's promoting it's trying to push towards, you know, let's learn something here and let's learn from each other and, and kind of call it out as being a good thing that we want to intentionally do. Yeah. And I think, man, I think the coolest part about that is, is the way you celebrate it. Right. I mean, to give that acknowledgement that, that, Hey, this is the person, this is the person that learned this and taught this and did this awesome thing today, man, that is a, uh, that's awesome. I'm loving that, my man. So let's, Let's change gears for a second, because uh, we've talked about some of the successes. What's something that you've tried to implement that failed, and, and what did you learn from it? So something recently that comes to mind. Um, <clears throat> so I, you know, I've gone through and taken the Scrum Master course. So I'm a registered Scrum Master, mm -hmm. and so you know, I've been kind of trying to find areas where you know, someone comes up with a problem and be like, hey, I can solve that with Scrum, you know, and that kind of a thing. <laughs> um, I'm sure Felipe will be happy to hear that. But um, there was a team recently who was, you know, talking about they were having some, you know, issues with kind of keeping everyone in the trailer um, kind of organized with who had to do what, you know, they wanted kind of a better system to, you know, uh, essentially keep their their tasks and their workload kind of managed and knowing what, you know, the left hand was doing and the right hand was doing. And so I didn't go and push full scrum, but I was kind of like, well, let's start by kind of, you know, implementing a Kanban board and get that going and starting to run it. And um, while it took off between a couple of people, um, I think it didn't necessarily take off the way that I had hoped it would, um, you know, for a, a number of different reasons. But I think, you know, going back and looking at it and talking with that team specifically, um, you know, one of the things was just, I didn't give kind of the proper, we'll say, introduction and time up front to kind of develop that why for everybody, um, you know, because I think not everyone on the team probably felt that we needed a system like that. Um, so yeah. when you have, you know, the opinions there. The team, how many people on the team were familiar with Scrum? Um, probably one, aside from me, you know, and so even just the the simple... Kanban board, you know, and not even just the structure behind Scrum, but, you know, a Kanban board, sure. there's maybe one, maybe two people who are familiar with it, but, you know, not not giving enough time at the beginning and kind of understanding that not everyone was necessarily on the same page here that we needed to change um, and do something differently. And so I think that's part of one of the reasons it failed is, you know, I just didn't give enough time to it at the beginning to kind of help them out and kind of guide them through. Um, 
but also, you know, I think what ended up happening was the person who was trying to implement it, they kind of took the tool and ran with it too fast without understanding the fundamentals behind it. And so they ended up using it much more like a, here's a list of all the things that I think we all need to do and assigning it to people. You know what I mean? And that kind of a thing. And so, um, you know, instead of meeting as a team and understanding what's our workload, let's take this on. Yeah, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this. And having people own the responsibility and kind of share it across the team, it was much more of a, here's a list of all the things that you guys need to do. I'm going to assign it to all you guys and just make sure you track it so I know where it all is. Um, so that that's probably part of the reason why it kind of fell through as well. But within it, I mean, I, I learned a lot from a standpoint that, you know, A, I have to make sure that, you know, more so more than, you know, probably more than ever is when you're implementing something new and trying to teach, you know, some some folks about it, you got to make sure that you just spend that time up front and you can spend the time up front. Um, instead of just kind of quickly introducing it and then jumping off and going to something else, um, making sure that you you can commit to having that time up front. But then also, you know, although I probably know the, you know, the lesson more than anything, but it keeps rearing its ugly head is that not everything is a one size fits all, you know. Um, and so I kind of just kind of gave them the basic tool and said, here you go. And they kind of ran with it. And it might not have been the particular situation to use that right it might have just been a hey you know what we'll help you guys out here a little bit let's just implement like a you know a daily 10 minute check-in you know it, it, just between you guys and the trailer here just just have a daily 10 minute check-in just to see where things are it'll help you guys get organized versus a hey here's you know a whole board and a, a whole different process to follow and all of that and so i think that that's kind of one of the big things that i i constantly learn over and over um is that you know it's not a one size fits all with a lot of these tools is you got to kind of right size it and understand the situation you know before you just kind of try and shoehorn something in there but if if someone if someone comes to you and says george teach teach me lean i want to be lean george teach me lean what's what's the first thing you tell them um I usually tell them to take a look at the stuff that you're doing on a regular basis, right? Find something that bugs you about it and see if you can improve it. Um, and oh, I kind of steal that one a little Paul bit, Akers. I think. I was going to say, Paul yeah, Akers I steal that there. one a little bit from Paul Akers <laughs> from it. But, I mean, honestly, I that's, that's for me, that I found the most helpful is that we can't, we also can't do lean to people. You I mean, you can't just go and, and give, here's lean, we're going to make all of you guys lean. It's you have to start and they have to kind of get into it on their own, you know? And so when people come and ask like, Hey, like, you know, I want to learn more about this. How do I be lean? It's, it's kind of like a great, like you want to be lean. So here's how you can be lean, right? It's just start something small like that. And yes, if you want to start reading into all the different, the tools and the different mindsets and changes and things you can make, you know, do that, but start with something small first. So find something that, that bugs you. I think it's, you know, from a, at least a 10,000 foot view of looking and being like, okay, finding something that bugs me and trying to fix it. You know, I think it's a good place to start. What I usually tell people too is like, okay, if you're going to say that the entire RFI process and our whole company is what bugs you, like maybe start with something <laughs> smaller. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to be able to change that overnight. Um, sure. So, you know, try, you know, try and, and do so pick something that you can actually affect, <laughs> um, you know, right. relatively quick so that you can get some small wins in there. But yeah, that's usually my general advice when people ask me. Start, start with the system within the system, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. It, you got to start, start small, you know, small ones, small ones. So what, uh, what, what's one of, what's one of, in your opinion, the biggest challenges with, with scaling lean and the mindset within an organization? Um. So there's, there's a number of them, I would say, but I think, the biggest thing for me that I, I've I've heard and, and read about and, and talking with folks about is that, um, you know, lean and the lean mindset, it's kind of referred to as a profound change. So it's not just like a change of something, but a prof profound change. And by that, I mean that we're not just changing the system of how we're doing something, 
you know, and, and the technicals of the tools and things like that, maybe even the process, but we're also trying to change the way that we think, right? So it, it, it's it's that much more of a change. So, you know, if you change a process and you change, you know, the tool behind things, right, there's, there's going to be things you got to adapt to, but generally we're still going to be thinking about it the same way. It's still the work and do it, but lean makes us think about everything differently. I mean, so now you're not just approaching your work, you're approaching your work from a standpoint of I'm going to get this done, but also how can I improve this, right? And, and kind of critically thinking about it. And then also, you know, approaching people and your interactions a little bit differently. And so it gets difficult because us being humans, right? We're shifting a mindset along with it. So it, that I think is the biggest challenge is that you're trying to shift mindsets. And where do you draw the line of, you're trying to force people to shift their mindset versus, you know, kind of lead them along to see that there's a better way and better way of thinking. Um, you know, and so from my standpoint, you know, of being, you know, in this position of, you know, I'm the internal lean champion and, and people come to me and ask for things and I'm, you know, teaching and trying to lead along the way is I feel like you have to ride that line of, you know, yes, you want people, more people to adopt this and know what it is. And so how do I get the information out there to show them that there's a different way of doing things? There's a way that you can improve what you're doing um, without pushing it onto them and saying, hey, you have to change. This is, you're doing it wrong. You know, you, you need to change and do it this way. Um, because then it starts to fall into that, um, it will, we'll call it that weaponizing mode, if you will. You know, we're doing lean to people. So I think that's that's probably the biggest challenge is, is trying to get is we're trying to change people's minds at the same time here. And that's not an easy thing to do, um, you know, because everybody's an individual. And so it get, it gets difficult to try and get in there to each and every individual. What's what's uh, an interesting piece of feedback you've got as you've tried to do that right as you've taken that approach and try to do some uh sounds like capability development with with your folks what's what's some interesting feedback you've gotten good or bad how are um, people rea how are people reacting to this yeah well i mean the general reaction is is with open arms you know i think that's one of the reasons i came here to begin with and you know one of the things that i, I credit us very much with is that you know we're we're receptive to it, and you know as a company we're we're open and, and trying something new and you know being on the the leading edge, so to speak. Um, but I mean, some of the feedback that I've got it varies quite a bit, but a lot of it tends to be centered around. I don't know if we're ready for this yet. You know of uh, you know do we? Yes, you know last planner system we can see the benefit of it, but. I don't know if we're necessarily ready to make the leap full into that, right? For this particular team, because, you know, whatever the situation might be, right? Is the, you know, project's a little too small, you know, that it's not a whole lot of time here. There's going to be a lot of learning there. By the time the project's done, we might've only done, you know, a little bit of learning. So it's like, where do you do that? And so a lot of the feedback that I get is, um, you know, we need to right size it for each individual case. And I think that also leads to some of the difficulty of it is, you know, with a company the size of IPS is there's a lot of right sizing across the board, you know, um, uh, of what size do you use for what size project and the project team and all of that. And, you know, I, that's probably, you know, the most useful thing in feedback that I get. And, and what I'm trying to focus on now is how do we right size that, you know, and does every team need to do X, right? Or does do we have a you know uh, a general guideline of saying like, hey, if you want to start looking at things, right, and you want to look at using this, this is what it takes, or you know something like that. Um, there's things that we're exploring now, but you know the the feedback that I get is generally around that of like you know if we, if we get by that first initial barrier to say like, oh, okay, that looks like something that would help. I agree, we need to try and change something and help here, but it's like. You know, I, I just I don't know if we're ready for that. Um, and so I think that's it's very helpful feedback to, <clears throat> to get from our teams. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. What what piece of advice would you give someone that was 
coming into your role, right? Someone that was uh, influencing change at an organizational level. What piece of advice would you give them? Um, let's see. I'd give them advice on a couple of levels um, from just a pure implementation standpoint. It'd probably be, you know, that feedback that I got is that look at each situation differently um, and kind of try to right size for the given situation. Um, but then I think on a personal level is one thing that I've, I've kind of realized as well and learned is that find the small wins you can and celebrate them when you can. Um, because I think in this kind of a role, um, it doesn't necessarily need to be with lean as I mean, I think anyone in a, in a role where they're trying to help bring about change, um, it's, it's an uphill battle, you know? because as, as human beings is we don't like change. So if you're coming in and you're trying to make some change, there's going to be a lot of uphill battles. There's going to be, you know, it's going to feel like you're pushing on a greased rope sometimes. You know what I mean? It's just, you're not getting any traction or moving anywhere and almost like you're falling backwards all the time. So, you know, that personal level of taking the small wins that you can get even on a daily basis, maybe even hourly, depending on the day <laughs> and the week. Um, and just, just celebrating them personally and saying like, okay, you know, this is why I get up in the morning. These are, this is why, you know, I still choose to go to work every day and talk to folks and still, you know, push in this direction is because you get those little wins out there. Um, you know, even though they are small, they, you know, the idea is they build up there and eventually, you know, hopefully you get that big win that's out there, but definitely celebrate the small ones when you can get them. That's awesome, man. Hell yeah. I love that. George, leave us, leave us with, uh, Leave us with your favorite quote. What's your favorite quote? Oh, favorite quote. Um, this is a tough one because I don't know if I actually have a favorite quote. Um, and I, you know what? It's I'm probably gonna mess the quote up, <laughs> but because I can't think of it word for word here, but it's from um you know one of the the books i've read in the past from system you know around systems thinking mm -hmm. and honestly i can't even really think remember exactly which book it's from but it's something that's in my head quite a bit is that <clears throat> and it's essentially that we can't usually see the system when we're inside of the system mm -hmm. so we need to rely on either help from outside or we need to take ourselves outside Right. And so, like I said, that's probably not even word for word, but that's the general idea behind it. Um, is, it is that, you know, when you're in the day to day of a system and you're trying to make change for it, it's very difficult to see what needs to get changed and what needs to, um, you know, happen. So, you know, either take a step out or, you know, have someone from the outside help you, you know, that, that kind of a thing, because, so someone's going to be able to have a perspective to see it, um, you know, and yeah, sometimes you can get bogged down in the day to day and you can't really see it too well. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. I know you butchered the quote a little bit, but George, that's beautiful because think, I, I think of how many times that I've been in a situation where I only see it this way, right? And then I'll go to somebody else's project site and it's just clear as day to me, right? Because I'm not in it. I'm not living it. I don't have all the history behind it so getting that clarity on the situation man you hit you hit the nail on the head with that one yeah no definitely you know it, it's much easier to see things in other people's stuff so you know <laughs> bring, bring someone in to take a look at your stuff and be like all right point it out you know tell me tell me where i can improve so it ends up being a little easier that's right well, George, this has been awesome, man. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thank you for what you're doing for the industry. Um, and, and look forward to connecting with you more. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, anytime.